Hi, I'm Patrick DSP, and I thought I'd like to make a video for you all to show you something that I've been doing since I was a kid. No, not that. It's uh, taking apart equipment and trying to make it better. This is one of my favorite distortion units. It's a Proco Rat distortion pedal. Unfortunately, this is just a reissue. I got it fairly cheap, but because of that, it's also made with uh, cheap parts. So let's try to fix this knob and maybe modify it a bit, add a little switch and get it to sound like a overdrive unit and a distortion unit with a little switch that lets us select both. So I have the Proco Rat on the operating table now. Just want to show you some quick tools that uh, we'll be using. We have uh, helping hands that will help us hold the circuit board. We may not need that, but we'll see. I have a multimeter here. This is just to check continuity to make sure the connections that I make are working and connected properly and I don't have any short circuits. All this stuff is fairly cheap and easy to get. There's a solder sucker, and that just helps me remove some of the solder that's holding the components together. Solder is essentially just metal glue, really hot metal glue when you use it. It connects uh, two com electrical components together to let a circuit pass through. And this helps me get rid of that, remove the bad circuit or bad component, and add the right one in. And so we have three new pots. Uh, for right now, I'm going to replace all three of them just so I have consistency when it's only this one that's bad, really. Just a socket screwdriver so I can disconnect it all. Some solder, my soldering gun. Oh, and also flux. That will help uh, the solder move around to the right spots and not to the wrong spots. So I'm going to... Disassemble this really quick because that's pretty boring. You don't need to watch that. We'll be back in a second. Here we have the rat kind of disassembled mostly. Uh, we still have these three knobs, potentiometers as they're technically called, to remove. And you can see the damage that's just pulled off completely. And uh, these little bits are, aren't looking so great as well. Yeah, while taking off the caps, they, uh, they bent pretty easy. They shouldn't normally do that. Anyway, so it's good that I have three to replace them with. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly remove these three nuts here, and then we'll get to soldering. Probably use the helping hands here to hold it in place while I uh, try to get those soldering points cleared. I've left it somewhat in the case because to remove the actual power supply uh, means I'd have to desolder that, and it doesn't need to be done. There's enough leeway and there's enough movement that I can do it myself while still in the case like this. Let's remove the nuts and uh, get back to it. And we got the nuts off those potentiometers. I got a funny little tool recently that seems to be smoking a bit, but that's all right. It's essentially a soldering gun, but it's got a little vacuum pump on it too. It can help you desolder things, very easy. Let's give it a try. So what we do is we put it to the solder, let it warm up and that's it. Try the next one. Let it warm up. Actually, it gets pretty hot. That's pretty good. Not bad for eight bucks. Boom. We'll just get rid of the excess first, and then we'll go back and see how clean it is. Right? Sorry, my light's not better. There's many ways you can actually desolder something. Uh, you can use a regular soldering gun and a solder sucker, or you use what is known as soldering wick. It's like a um, weaved metal fabric, if you can think of it like that. And you run it through, and this fabric actually has flux. This stuff, all on it, is essentially sucks the solder into it. Anyways, that's essentially how it works. It smokes quite a bit for right now. Maybe it's going to catch fire. Who knows? Yeah. So let's pause this for now. I'll finish this up and I'll show you what it looks like all cleaned up. So I've zoomed in a bit 
and maybe you can see how it's not exactly uh, as much solder anymore. So what we can do is take a regular soldering gun and we can just gently push those pins through and eventually it will just pop right out just like that. So warm them all up because there's usually little bits of solder inside those holes. Yeah, so quickly run it through. Come on. Of course the first one's easy. First one's always easy. There we go. Push through. Oh, still a bit there. Hopefully you're still in focus there. Yeah, essentially I'm just wanting to make this video because I know a lot of fellow producers and engineers and whatever title you want to give yourself uh, are pretty nervous when it comes to opening up their equipment and tinkering around and making it better and thinking that, ah, it's broken, I gotta buy a new one or take it to a repair shop. When a lot of this stuff is actually really easy to fix yourself. There we go. Sometimes it just takes a little patience. And pounding the shit out of it. That sometimes helps too. Here we are again after we've removed the potentiometers, the knobs. Uh, I just quickly put them in right now, uh, temporarily, and screwed them in place just so you could see and keep a good image for you guys instead of you seeing me fumble around with the back of my hand pointing at the camera. Because don't we just hate it when we see videos and all we see is the backs of people's hands, especially modular reviews. It'd be nice to see where the cables are going. Take a hint, maybe, some of you guys. Anyways, so I'll just quickly show you how to solder basic connections. Uh, you can see the little bits sticking out there. We'll add a little bit of flux just to get things flowing nice. And... One, two, three. Ah, oh, got a nice one there. Which one? A little bit more over here. It's pretty basic. It's just essentially metal glue. more going nice nice and shiny that's what you want nothing too cold nothing too hot that's it we'll just clean that one up there we go nice done now it's fixed but the whole reason for doing this was to modify it so let's modify it we fixed the proco rat distortion pedal. Uh, we added the new knobs, should be better knobs, potentiometers. And now we want to modify it. The modification we want to do here is called the ruts, 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 I don't know, however you want to pronounce it, mod. And it's really simple. All you need to do is cut resistor number six, that's this guy here. They're all numbered and lettered on the circuit board. So you can actually see what what they are if you look up on the schematics that's capacitor number four capacitor number seven and r for resistor resistor number six i've already gone ahead and desoldered this and see there it is resistor six now essentially we're done right now this distortion unit will now work as an overdrive unit it should give it a bit fuller sound less abrasive but we did like the original sound too we want to be able to have the option of an overdrive and distortion. So the easiest way to do that is just to add a switch. We will connect a wire from that hole that still exists there to one of these legs and this one to the center one. From the hole to, let's say that one, and the resistor to the center leg. And then we'll drill a hole in the case, mount it, and that's it. We have a switch to constantly switch it from the original state to the modified state. That's it. I've set up my switch here ready to be soldered. It's 
fairly simple. Like I said, two connections. I put on my heat shrink there just to make sure we don't have any shorts and nothing touches each other. Do that before you start soldering. Otherwise, you won't be able to do it. Like I said, it's fairly simple. A little bit of solder. That's it, it's done. Ta-da! And we just put the heat shrink on there. And we can heat that up and it will just stick. So we can just quickly do it like this. Could use a lighter too, but anyways, that's done. And we'll set up the next one to the center terminal. Here we have the completed mat. As you can see, it's put together all right. It hardly notice any difference, except for the switch that's on the back right here. Simple. Let's pair it up with 303, because that's why I did this. So here it is raw, a simple pattern, and let's listen to the original version of the rap. You can hear how noisy it is, how a bit over the top it is. It's great, but sometimes you want to tone it down a bit. So how can you tone it down? Well, with that mod I did, it brings it back into a bass type of sound rather than up ahead and the lead. A bit smoother, a lot more bass, uh, more even frequencies. And with it off. And the original.